Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and uh, looking at the title of the video you're wondering what the hell this has to do with the United States and I think I've mentioned this before that here in the United States we have a huge population and we have huge ethnic populations um, from all over the world and uh, although my heritage is from Northern Europe not everyone here is uh, we have huge populations here from Africa. We have huge populations here from uh, Oceania, uh, the Pacific Rim, uh, from Asia, you name it. South America, Southern Europe, all kinds of places. So, and again, I've mentioned this before, as when people came here, they cooked what they knew how to cook. And uh, this particular dish is of uh, Japanese origin. And uh, it's chawanmushi. Now, here in the United States, we typically think of a custard as a sweet dish. Um, something with eggs and milk that's set up like a pudding. Um, but in this particular case, chawanmushi is a savory custard. Of sorts it doesn't have dairy in it instead we're going to use a, a, a broth that I'll show you how to make here in just a moment um, but it's a it's a kind of a general term for savory things vegetables or meats or mushrooms or whatever cooked in a bowl in this custard uh, in a steamer so you're gonna find literally countless recipes um, for chow and mushi here on YouTube and like some of them are completely vegetarian some of them are going to be completely proteins some are going to be like I'm going to do with proteins and mushrooms it's a very general thing but it is and it's got a lot of little components but it's relatively easy to do and it's soft it's soft which given what's going on with me right now is very advantageous. I can still get some proteins and I'm able to get them down. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go and make Chawan Mushi. So before we get to the custard part, we're going to go ahead and we're going to prep the things that are going to go in our Chawan Mushi containers and be steamed. So what that entails is I've got some shrimp here. I got some tiger prawns. Look pretty nice. And I think they're relatively clean already. Yeah, I'm not finding a vein in this one. So I got three shrimps for two people. So I guess I'll cut this one this way to be sure it's half and half. Now these are still partially frozen, which is okay. Because I had a problem last time I made this with overcooking my shrimp a bit. So anyway, some shrimp. This little goodie here, if you've ever been in an Asian grocer, you've seen this. This is a product called Kamaboko. It is a uh, ground and steamed fish cake. And it's made in very much the same way that you might be familiar with mock crab here in the United States. Uh, mock crab, for those of you who don't know, is actually a fish product made, made from ground fish called surimi. And uh, this is made in a very similar way. The color is just food color. It has no taste whatsoever. And it's always, or almost always, it's not always, but almost always on a little wooden board. So you just slice underneath it a little ways. And again, this one's frozen. Because, well, I didn't give myself enough prep time. I'm not pushing very hard because I don't want this to slip and take my hand off of my wrist. But we're going to need... I cut one piece already. We're going to need four little quarter inch slices of this. Like a couple per bowl. This stuff is really good, by the way. 
It tastes very much like the mock crab, again, that you can buy in every grocer here in the United States. So we'll get ourselves some pieces of this. There we go. There's four little chunks of that. We'll set that aside. And then I've got some shimeji mushrooms here. Um, they're just a little, I bought these at the Asian grocer. They're just a tiny little mushroom. They're kind of like an enoki, if you're familiar with those for making miso soup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, although you, you really shouldn't, um, if your mouth is and <laughs> jaw work normally, you don't need to, but I'm going to give these a little cut in half. A little bit here. Um, just to make them easier for me to be able to consume. There we go. That's probably sufficient. Yeah, a couple more. Can never have too many mushrooms, right folks? So I got some shrimp, combo boco, got some mushrooms. Now, here's the thing, we need to season these. So, uh, my shrimp go in a bowl. They've already been peeled, so don't panic. And to that, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of soy sauce. Okay, maybe a little more than a half teaspoon. <laughs> no big deal. Not rocket science, is it? And a little bit of sake. So. You gotta love anything that includes sake as a seasoning ingredient, you know. And I'm just gonna go ahead, give those a little, you know, a little tussle around in the seasoning, let them set. I'm gonna grab another bowl here. I'm going to do the exact same thing to my mushrooms. Okay. I'm going to give them a little bit of soy sauce. By the way, folks, buy the best soy sauce you can find. I, I guess I don't have any particular objections to Kikoman. Um, but if you can buy a better grade, do so. You don't use much of it, and it doesn't spoil, and it really does make a difference if you buy the good stuff. A little bit of sake. Sweet. That's not the last thing we're going to season with those two ingredients, by the way, so I'm going to leave that open. And a little round here, a little tussle. Get that all in those shimeji mushrooms there. Hey there, and there's my shrimps. Okay. So, now, these are fine. Now we have to work on the custard part. So what I've got is I've got some water heating here on the stove. It's just about to a boil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out one cup of that. All right. Turn my stove off. Set that aside. Okay. Now, what I'm going to put in there is this. Handashi. This is dashi powder. 
It's instant dashi mix. Now dashi is a broth uh, pretty much made from hot water and a, a fish called bonito. The fish is dried and then shaved into very thin, paper thin uh, shavings. Um, and that those shavings are called uh, katsubushi. And you can buy them already shaved in, in, a, in a bag. And bring them home, boil your water, and steep them and hope that you get it right. Boy, how do you take some practice? How much katsubushi do I put in how much water? How long do I steep it? You better know what you're doing. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up with a dashi that's either way too weak or way too strong. Benito is a very strong fish. And uh, drying it makes it all the more so. You can also buy whole chunks of benito, dried Benito in a wooden box plane and make your own shavings. I mean, you can get as hardcore about this as you want. This is available online if you don't have an Asian grocer near you and you live in Gerlach, Utah. You can buy it online. They'll ship it right to your door. Handashi. So, it's not expensive. There's 120 servings in that box. There's two pack, two pouches. Once you open it, you got to seal up what you didn't use. So I got this cool little jar Beverly got me, um, just to keep my dashi in. So, or I should say my my dashi mix. And I got my water here. And I'm gonna use a half teaspoon. In a cup of water. That works pretty nice for the Western palate. If you are of East Asian descent, you may differ with me. You may think that it needs a lot more, and that's fine. There's, you know, is, is, there's no right and wrong here. This uh, uh, has, we have found works nice for you know a couple of folks from the midwestern united states with a relatively adventurous pattern of eating to this again you're going to add a half teaspoon of soy sauce and a half teaspoon of sake Stir that in. Water doesn't have to be boiling, by the way, folks. I just had it on the stove on low and it came to just about a boil. Let's set that aside for a moment and grab another bowl. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I got one right here. <laughs> Sweet. Roughly one egg per serving, per per person that you're making chow on mushi for. There's two of us, so I got two eggs. Okay. Let me grab a fork. I suppose it'd be nice if I had a micro whisk, but a fork works just fine. And I'm going to beat my eggs. Now here's the thing, folks. You're going to beat the eggs. And then you're going to add the dashi with the seasoning. And then you're going to put it through a strainer. Because eggs don't beat perfectly. And you don't want any weirdness in your custard. You don't want scrambled eggs. You're not making a frittata. You want a very smooth, silky custard. There we go. 
Okay, I think it's been long enough. My, my broth is still steaming pretty good, but I think if I add it slowly, I can temper the eggs without scrambling them. So I'm going to drizzle this in here to bring the temperature on the eggs up. Stirring constantly so it, again it doesn't... Come on up and get a shot in the bowl there. Just keep adding it slowly, tempering, bringing those eggs up. The more of the hot fluid you get in, the faster you can pour because the whole temperature obviously has come up quite a bit. Make sure I mix up all that bonito goodness in there. There we go. Nice. And I got another bowl of the same size. And a strainer. Just a regular, you know, tea strainer or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to pour that in there right through the strainer. There we go. Roll it around, get anything out that'll come through. Not too much left, but enough that you really don't want it in your custard mix. And that is what we're going to pour onto our other ingredients in the Chawan Mushi bowls. Just poured it into there because it's easier to manipulate it into the little bowls. We're ready to start prepping. So I had, aren't these adorable? I ordered those online. There's, they come in all kinds of different colors and patterns. Um, they're about $10 a piece. Some are more. About three and a quarter inches in diameter. These hold six ounces. That's going to be pretty standard for a chow on mushy ball. So this is not a meal. This is an element to a meal. Okay. But, be as it may, there's our prep chopsticks. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the mushrooms in the bottom. Often chow on mushi is made with some chicken that is also seasoned with the sake and soy sauce and uh, browned in a, in a saucepan prior to being put in here. Just browned on the outside just to get the, the Maillard reaction. But again, it doesn't, you know, there's, there's no rules here. Stick in. Oh, I think I'll put in some of my Kamaboko. It's kind of pretty. And this comes in a variety of colors, by the way, folks. Some of it has patterns in it. It's very nice. Poor guy can't even get a hold of his Kamaboko. Shake them like a leaf, guys. Some shrimp. I like shrimps. Boiled shrimp. Steamed shrimp. Kamaboko shrimp. No, not Kamaboko shrimp. Kawanbushi. Chawanbushi. Chawanbushi shrimp. Tuck those in there. Let's 
scrape off these last few mushrooms, divide it up. See there, real pretty. And then I'm going to pour my custard mix on those to fill them up. Not all the way to the top, it's going to expand a little, you give it some room to breathe. Alright, so I got a little leftover, it's not a big deal. To that, we're going to put that in our steamer. Now, this is a new stainless steel steamer that Beverly and I just bought. It was $57, by the way. Go ahead and get one, they last forever. Yes, I have a bamboo one uh, that sets in a wok. Um, they're nice too, I like them. Um, but this is something we get a lot of use out of. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the spurs of that, bring the steam all the way up. And I'm going to grab the strainer. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set my Shawan Mushi in here. Okay. And then I'm going to steam this on high for a minute. For about one minute. Then I'm going to turn it down to low and let it go ahead and steam on low for another 10 minutes. Now, trust me, I can tell you from experience, if it gets away from you, don't worry about it. Last time I did this, I steamed it for 25 minutes. It was delicious. Yes, the shrimp were way overcooked, but no big deal. Other than that, everything was fine. So, other than worrying about making certain seafoods tough, if it gets away from you, it's not the end of the world. So, it's, it's a relatively forgiving dish to make. Well, that's about it for now. Like I said, I'm going to turn this down in a moment to low and let it steam for 10 minutes. And then when we get ready to come back, I'll, uh, we'll start the camera back up and show you what it looks like when it's completely cooked. So hang around. We'll be right back. Okay, our 10 minutes is up. And I got my mitt, so I don't burn my little paws. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this out of the steamer. Don't lead with your face when opening the steamer, by the way. It can give you some really bad burns. And as you can see, our custard has set up real nice, bubble up around all the ingredients. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that. Lift that out here where we can get a good look at it. Barely can get a good shot of that. And trust me, folks, these are... Boy, howdy hot. So you are going to want some protection on your hands. Let me go ahead and turn my heat off. Grab some, oh, Chinese parsley, I guess this is. And uh, cut it up in little pieces about a half an inch to an inch long. Put a small garnish of that on. Mmm, that smells nice. Very, uh, very, this is very aromatic parsley. And then I've got some fish roe, basically, folks, some, some fish eggs. You're going to have to forgive me. I don't recall the name of what this is. Just have one of those days. 
just a little tiny bit okay on top these are fish eggs you know in a perfect world I suppose you could use uni which is sea urchin eggs if you could find it and you can afford it hey go for it and that Everyone is Chawan Mushi. Now, any of the recipes say, um, after you get this out of the steamer, transfer it to a Bon Marie. Up here it says Bon Marie, that's how you pronounce that. In other words, a steam tray. Um, you don't really need to, folks, certainly not at home. These cute little, this is a ceramic, all ceramic. You put the little lid on, and I want to tell you that's going to stay warm. It's going to stay hot for a good solid half an hour or so. No problem. It really holds the heat in. So anyway, that is one of the versions, um, the one sans chicken, um, of Chawan Mushi. Um, a, a simple, savory custard dish. Um, and it's not really all that tough, as you see. Um, so uh, it's delicious, by the way. I am. I'm not going to dig into that because it's really hot and I have enough problems with my mouth right now without doing that to it. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody again. Um, if you're new here, hey, pick subscribe and come along for the adventure because we've got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, thank you for watching. Thank you.